Well, hello model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Rao. And this week I want to show you the components and contents of these kits. And it may surprise you, there's actually a number of differences in with these kits. But they are the same tooling, but they go back pretty far back. Um, so there's I, I kind of group them into three different groupings and I'll explain why. But it's been around a very long time. First issued in... Um, I don't have the original issues. Uh, I've got close to them, but and I've had some of the early issues, but all of these are reissues, but some of them are modified reissues. But this is the AMT 70 Dodge Challenger RT, and first issued by Lindsay AMT, which owned them between 78 and 80. They issued it as the Yankee Challenge. It came out as this kit first, and then it was issued as... Um, 70 Challenger RT convertible um, that was issued in like 1980. Those box tops, the yellow box top and the original box top, they had barcodes but no copyright dates. But I had to look at the com the company when they were owned because it was originally Lindsay AMT when it was first issued under this, which was like 1978 to 1980. Then AMT Ertl uh, bought them, so ERTL bought them. And they issued it in like 1980, 81, 82, the yellow box art car with the stripes. Uh, those box arts I'll be displaying as well. It came out as a convertible. And then it was issued, this box, 1994 to like 98, 99. This was issued quite a bit. And then came out again as the Yankee Challenger. And it's been issued a number of times. Then they did some modifying to the tool. So, and came out with this Vanishing Point Challenger. And then eventually this Johnny Lightning uh, Challenger. But even though most of these box arts are hard tops, make no mistake, every one of these is actually a convertible body. But it has a separate hard top with a vinyl top. But I'll show you all those uh, contents and the differences because there are some differences and they did some changes to the tool. So pretty cool information. So if you know exactly what you want to build, it'll you know, this will show you which kit you might want to look for because of the different options in the kit but they're not all exactly the same. So um, stay tuned and I'll get into the specifics of each kit. Well, I'm gonna start off with this one right here um, for the AMT 70 Dodge Challenger. Now this one is the most common one. I run into this one the most as far as uh, the stock ones. There is a previous one um, that was issued before this. It's the Street Machines with the yellow box art uh, convertible. Um, there are actually two with the yellow box art convertibles, um, which one I have, but it's a much later issue. But that was the first one that was uh, pictured, and it was pictured as a convertible, where this one was pictured as a hardtop. And a, like I mentioned, a lot of people um, were upset when they found out it was a convertible. But the box actually tells you um, right here. It says, shaker hood, parts included to build your choice of hardtop or convertible body styles. So this one actually tells you, and as far as I know, this may be the only box that tells you, because I don't think any of my other boxes actually say it. But, you know, not too many people actually read this. It mentions the 440 cubic inch, 390 horsepower, Holly two barrel, um, three Holly two barrels. So it mentions the six pack here. So uh, this one's pretty accurate as far as the box goes to give you an idea of what you're getting. And then they picture um, everything here. So um, this particular issue has kind of been a favorite. It was issued in 1994. But I think it was in production all the way to like 98. Um, one of the reasons I say that is when you get inside this. And you get into the directions. Or is it my other one that has it? But like this shows the 96 GMC ad that's inside here. My other one has a 96 GMC ad and it also has a flyer for the 1998. So well, since I dumped everything out, I'll show you the, the decals because this is one of the things. It's got pretty nice decals, but they're a little mudded up. So the RT is kind of hard to read in white. This is how mine was, but it has a shaker, has the 446 packs. Um, they're pretty nice there. Challenger, the RT and the Challenger RT for the back. And then this stripe as well, which I have never actually used this stripe. Um, intend to sooner or later. But I used the white RT ones, and they were a little bit mudded up. The black ones are a little bit nicer on this sheet. But all of them are a little bit different. But to give you an idea, 
the yellow box art car. Here's the decal sheet from it. I have had had the kit, but I don't have it anymore. I did kind of, when I put these away, for some reason I cut the, the racing ones separate from the stock ones. Even though this one, um, it's got 440 six pack, and then it's got six pack 440. That's not right. The RT is in red. The stripes aren't exactly right. And then plus they turn and go up over the deck lid and have that. So these are not, they're kind of like the factory stripes, but it's not. But that box does say street machine. So, and I have had that kit. I don't have that kit now, but all of its components are exactly the same. So um, we'll get that other than it's molded in a bright yellow like this. Um, I have some pieces from that kit, but I've used it. So uh, don't have those anymore. So we'll move this aside and we'll start putting um, some of, actually let me pull the rest of this out and I'll just put it back in the box as I go. So mention the decals. And then the instructions in this particular version are actually pretty nice. It tells you all about uh, the 70 Challenger and then the instructions are actually pretty nice as far as telling you uh, how to do it and how it's all laid out and how to paint some of the parts. So I think this one has one of the better instructions on telling you how to do all this stuff and all the exterior colors right here, the factory colors, where to put the decals. Um, so this one is pretty nice in that respect as it's probably got one of the better instructions as far as putting it together and telling you how to build it. So put that in there. Here's the tires that you get. And most of the ones I've had have had these tires. The Goodyear um, G7015s. And I kind of like these tires, um, but they're more like the, the red line or white line. I like the pad printed tires. They've, they've come out recently. Um, but that's what I use and that's what comes in this kit. And here is that convertible body. The body itself is really nice. It's molded pretty, pretty well got the uh, sun visors in it and a really nice engine compartment and all the, the mold lines in the standard gas cap right here and you kind of make a note of that but uh, the standard gas cap and then the trunk moldings so we'll set that here is the hard top it's got texture and it's a vinyl top and you glue this on this is not a convertible up top it's the actual hard top with a vinyl top and here's the rear wing but that's the TA wing it's uh, really not correct for an RT um, with some exceptions because I understand a few cars actually got this but technically wasn't supposed to but it happened here's the interior tub and the radiator support with the radiator and then uh, overflow bottle or is that the washer bottle I'm not really sure a 70 had an overflow bottle, but uh, console in it, uh, pretty nice interior. It's got the pedals there for a manual tranny and the manual shifters in there elsewhere. So, and then this didn't change. I'm gonna go through all the components of this particular version. And then when I get into the later kits, I'll get more into what changed and I'll go briefly over the ones that didn't. So we'll go over this one a little closer. Here's the 440 engine and the manual tranny and the front suspension with the torsion bars. Now here's the exhaust manifolds. Now these, these are more of the stock 383 two barrel or log manifolds. These are not the manifolds that would come on a Super Commando or Magnum engine. So these are really not correct for the RT because that would have came with the 383 Magnum or the 440 Magnum 446 pack, which this is the 446 pack as far as uh, the induction goes. So these manifolds are not correct. They're not horrible, but they're just not correct. So with that being said, we'll move on. Same thing with the way the pipes are routed, but um, that just follows the more standard 383. Then this tree right here, here's kind of the rest of it. Here's a Dana 60 rear end, which um, behind a Hemi or the, the 446 pack or four speeds. So being a four speed, this rear end is kind of correct. It's a Dana 60. Here's the other half of the Dana 60. Drive shaft. Here's the wheel backs and then the pieces you glue on to help them spin. These are a bit oversized, so they're really kind of out of scale, and but that's kind of toyish. But 
being that this dates back from the mid to late 70s when it was developed, kind of not a big surprise. There's the cylinder heads, the front timing cover with the fuel pump and oil filter, that's pretty cool. The fan blade, front license plate, distributor, battery, and of course the steering column, which is a pretty nice column. A brake booster, master cylinder, and the radiator hose. Here is the chassis, which is a really nice chassis. Um, fits pretty well. Kind of open here a little bit, but covers a lot of that up. It's got separate shocks. Here's the firewall. Here's the front piece, which this front piece, it goes together kind of funky because here's the real separation line right here. It, it's, it's there, but these parts should be part of the fender. So when the body's glued together, there's a seam there that you really shouldn't have. Well, maybe I'll turn it around here. This way. So there's a seam there, if you can see it. And it really shouldn't be there, and you can glue that in and fill that in. Um, and you can put the chassis in with this piece on. And it's a little hard to put the chrome grill piece in there, but it's not impossible because when it's there, you got a, enough room. Um, you know, but if you glue the uh, radiator support in, you, it gets a lot tighter, but it is possible to get that chrome piece in there with both of them. But you can glue this in, paint the whole body, and then paint the firewall or radiator support separate and glue that in. But I glue the firewalls in first when it comes to building these. Here's the other wheel back. Now here's the shaker hood, which I like this shaker hood. It's got these hood pins here. Um, those are not in the right spot. They should be a little bit farther out, more right here and not here, uh, as far as the real car goes. And this emblem's kind of nice. Uh, it seems to be a little bit far back to me, but that doesn't really bother me. Here's the shocks. Here's the six-pack um, carburetors. And here's the shaker hood, but I mentioned before in my other video, there's no grills. And that's kind of always bothered me. It shouldn't be open. There's grills that go in there, but those are kind of missing. Here's your belts. Here's your six-pack intake manifold. And here's some more of the parts here. Here's your front seats and the seat backs. Now, earlier versions like this have these seat patterns. I'll show you the different ones, and I'll set this aside because in later kits, they did change this. But these are nice seats. I actually prefer these seats over the other ones. But they're really either one of them is really not bad, not a deal breaker for me. Here's the rear valance panel, and here's the hood hinges. So we'll set that aside. Here's the exhaust system with the tips in it. I like these. It's pretty easy to detail and put in there. Here's the tail lights. All the kits have these same tail lights. And these actually work 70 and 71, just depends on how you paint them. And the convertible boot, which falls off all the time. A lot of these are bagged really tightly and a lot of the parts fall off. So I've seen many of them where the parts have fallen off. But there's a the convertible boot. And of course the glass, you know, windshield rear glass, and then the lights. But the lights have these little mounting pegs in there and they kind of distract from, from them. Um, I like to just uh, cut those off and sand them flat, make the headlight look a little more realistic to me. And then here's the chrome tree, which I still have in the bag. I just kind of left it in the bag. But a couple of things. There's a shifter, which is not a pistol grip shifter, but it really should be. Um, so it kind of looks like an automatic shifter, but it's a manual boot. There's the alternator. Here's the rear bumper. The front bumper with bumper guards. Make a note of that. Here's the regular 440 valve covers. The Magnum 500 wheels, which later ones don't have that. Inside rear view mirror, and then the grill with Challenger RT molded into it. And then chrome mirrors, which you can strip those and paint those, because chrome mirrors were an option on these, or painted body color. And then last thing, here's the dash. Now I want to make a note of this too, because this has the rally dash in it. And then it's a one-piece dash. Uh, later kits, they change this too. So these early kits have this dash. And then later ones have a little bit different. So they did do some changes to it. So we'll uh, get moving on and I'll show you what's in uh, the next one. Now here is the next issue. I see this one a lot of, uh, often as well. It's been reissued a few times. A couple of different box arts. 
most common is this one or the checker box art which uh, of course display as well and then there's the first version of this which is the one I've never had um, it says Yankee Challenger or challenge no R um, I always say Yankee Challenger I know a lot of people say Yankee Challenger but there's no R and it doesn't say anything about being a 70 Challenger or anything and that was the very first issue uh, white box art car and I have a picture of that but I've never actually had that kit but I understand that the components never changed um, don't know if it had some of the stock parts but this one has um, all the stock parts of the previous kit plus some so I'm going to get into this box and we'll show you some of the differences here so of course same convertible body nothing changed there here's all the same 446 pack stuff the shaker all of that so all of that is in this kit matter of fact this kit you can almost build a stock out of the box with one small exception but here here's uh, one of the things with this kit here's the RT hood and I like this hood but it's got the hole cut in it for the blower here's the blower belts your TA spoiler here's the lift blocks the big uh, wheel backs to put the wider tires on the back the shocks, more of the um, wheel backs. This hood's about to fall off, but not a big, big deal. Bleh, not a big deal for me. And it actually says uh, 440 Magnum right there in the side of the hood. By the way, you can barely see it, but it does say it. So it's kind of funny there. And you've got this blower base intake manifold. Here's the other side of the blower belts. So there's some more of the unique parts to this one. The same exhaust system. Here's the same seats and rear roll pan. Of course, uh, same front end, same chassis, nothing modified there. Same exhaust manifolds. No custom exhaust for those side pipes, really. You, you get the side pipes, but the rest of the exhaust is all stock. The front suspension. Here's the drive shaft and the rear end parts, and all these parts are all the same, other than some of them have fallen off the bags. All the stock stuff, stock steering wheel, so there's all of that. Here's the rally dash, and then firewall, intake tub, none of that's changed. Here's the tires. You don't get the stock tires, you get these rally um, TA tires or rally GT tires. So you got two wide ones and two skinny ones. And I never really liked these tires, but they're in there. There's the tail lights. Here's the chrome tree. All of this is the stock stuff, same as the other kit. And here you got the blower. Um, uh, the front and rear pieces of the blower, the blower scoop, which is kind of cool. And then here's the side pipes that hook up and tee into uh, the stock exhaust. So as I mentioned, it has the Magnum 500s. You can see them there. Not really clear because I still have them in the chrome bag. And of course, here's the rear end, some of the other parts. And then here's the instructions. Which these are a bit more vague. They don't tell you anything about colors much or how to paint it. They're just a, a bit more vague. This was issued in 2002, this particular one. But this one's been reissued multiple times. There shows you the side pipes and how they attach the stock exhaust and all of that right there for the uh, blower and everything. And then the decals. This is all you get for the decal, so no stock decals. And you get Yankee Challenge and then 76. Which I believe 76 was due to the year it was actually designed, but it wasn't released until like 78 or 79. Um, but I'm not 100% sure on all of that. That's just a rumor, but I don't really know. And one thing I wanted to mention, I forgot briefly. Here the box shows you the stuff here. All hardtop pictures. This just tells you 2002 issue and just all of the copyrights. There's nothing on this box that tells you it's a convertible body. Not not a single thing. So, but as you get to know these cars, they all are. But that will conclude this one and I'll move on to the next one. All right, moving on to this one. This one um, got a lot of people excited when they issued this kit. Uh, in, in the mid 2000s which I believe yeah 2004 was when this one was issued but this got a lot of people excited um, and then same kind of thing happened they started opening the box and finding out it's a convertible body 
and there was a lot of backlash on it but i still believe this sold well but because of the box art the vanishing point box art um i've seen people asking a lot more money for this kit and there are some differences in here compared to the previous kits so they did do some modifications to it uh, most noticeable as you can see the rally wheels in the box art but amt at the time that didn't necessarily mean that's what you got inside the box but they are in there and then also it's got the uh, RT hood. You can kind of see the 446 pack air cleaner in this picture here and some of the stuff here. But it doesn't tell you that it's a convertible body. There's nothing on here that tells you that. But it's all, it's all really nice and they got a lot of pictures from the original movie um, here. And I don't think this may predate the remake because um, all the pictures I, I believe are from the original movie. But we'll get into this and I'll show you what's different in this. But as I mentioned, there's the convertible body. Nothing changed there. It's got the Challenger scripts and everything. So again, I don't have any real issue with this body. Here you get uh, the hood with the hole in it still, which I'll show you more on this. So all of the parts from the Yankee Challenger or Yankee Challenge are in here. Um, well, not all of them. I believe most of them, but most of these are the custom parts. You got the blower base here and then the hood, which is kind of surprised that that's in there. You know, this all this is the same. All these parts are the same. Just all on one tree now instead of kind of cut up, but pieces are falling off and bounced off. There's the chassis and the, the front stuff, the same as before. We'll get to the chrome tree in a minute. Then here... Here's the updated seats. So this is the same, the hinges are the same, but the seats are different. The main thing, I put them side by side here, get them in frame here. The patterns are a bit different and the seams are actually sticking out instead of in. And they're a little skinnier and narrower. The seat backs I think look nicer, but these seat backs do not fit these seat fronts. So they're not interchangeable because of the widths. So, the, this did change, um, and this is from the earlier kits, and this is the later kits for this one. So there's that. Now the interior tub did not change at all. Um, same thing with the radiator support. Here's some more new parts. Let's get this out. It's got the same Goodyear tires, except for this time they don't say Goodyear, they just got the line on them. So then there's the tail lights. So they look more like the white line or red line tires in my opinion. Same glass, same axle exhaust. There's the engine half, the fan blade. So all of that stuff is all the same in there. But some of the other differences here. Here's uh, another pretty much new tree. Now you have your six pack intake manifold, which this is kind of funny, your fan blade. Now you've got a whole nother RT hood with no dodge lettering, no hood pins, and it's actually molded a bit more square. So to me, this hood looks a bit funny compared to this hood. I think that hood looks better than this hood. It's just the shape and the overall design. It's just this one's a bit more toyish than this one. So, and then there's no scripting on it. Like this says 440 Magnum, which you could sand off and change that to 446 pack. But we'll set that down. But this comes in the kit. So here's this hood. Here's your six-pack intake manifold. Here's the base. Then your shocks. Here's your dash top. And here's the front of the dash. Now this is the standard dash, not the rally dash. So the later kits, some of these later kits, have this dash instead. And then I think it's kind of funny that it's got this intake which has some really badly molded four barrel uh, carbs on it. It just really doesn't look, but that's the intake that you use for this air cleaner assembly. Now I haven't built that particular version or put it together um, or used this hood. Uh, I've kind of used this dash before, but I've taken a hood and I started to fill in my own hole and I never finished this or never really got going or much farther on it, but since I like this hood, since it has a Dodge lettering, the hood pins in the right spot, um, I started to fill that in, but I never finished it. But there's one that I started to do that. And then also, 
Here's the chrome tree, which same, most of these parts are the same on this side of the tree. You got your rear bumper, your front bumper with the bumper guards. Then you got your rally wheels now instead of the uh, Magnum 500s. You got your regular 440 uh, valve covers, your chrome mirror, so all of this is the same. But then you get these parts. Here's your chrome RT gas cap. Those haven't been in the older issues. So that's a welcome addition. Uh, glad to see that. Then you've got your front bumper without bumper guards and then the license plate. And you've got these valve covers, which are Hemi-like, but they fit that 440 engine and they just, they just don't look right at all. So it's kind of like they were going to do a Hemi, but they didn't. Um, so that's kind of there. That's kind of also why I saved the instructions for last. Here's the instructions. So let me get the decals out of it. Which these are pretty decent. It tells you about the uh, Challenger and Vanishing Point. Um, talks about that. And the rest of the instructions are fairly nice. Here's those really bad manifolds and that funky intake manifold. But it goes together. It shows you using those valve covers with the coils in the middle or the spark plugs, kind of like the Hemi. Um, but I wouldn't use those. I'd use the other ones provided, but they're in there. The instructions tell you to do that. Then your rally wheels and tires. And then the new interior with the shifter. Still not a pistol grip shifter. And then the body, which the instructions show you as a convertible the whole time. So it's kind of funny that it's the vanishing point car, but nowhere does it tell you to glue the roof on. It's all the convertible. So, and then here's the decals that you get. You get the Dodge lettering for the hood. You got the 446 pack emblems for the hood, six pack for the uh, air cleaner, the correct license plates, and then the Challenger RT decals, which are all fairly nice. So it's, it's still a pretty decent kit for what you get in here, but there are some some issues and a few differences here, but it still builds the same, and most of the parts are the same other than that interior. And that brings us to the last one in my collection is this one right here. And it's kind of funny. This one, it, it's gonna go pretty quickly, but I have to say, it was a little bit more expensive to buy new because of the um, die cast car in there, which my son keeps telling me he wants. He wants to play with it. And for some reason, they put Johnny Lightning on the box. It's still AMT. But these didn't appear to sell very well. And But I like to look for these if I could find these at a good price. I just keep my eyes open at swap meets. And, you know, I grab them at, at a good price. But this one, there's really not much different. This one's molded in white. Uh, my issue's molded in white. And... I didn't open any of this. I've been, I've had this kit before. This one, it has all of the exact same parts as that uh, uh, Vanishing Point car. All the same chrome, all the same parts, the same rally wheels, you know, all the same, the no shaker parts, but it has all of the, the six pack intake and, you know, all of those parts, everything I showed you there. So, comes with the, the, the die cast car, which is pretty cool. I haven't taken that out. And as far as the tires, it has the same tires that aren't printed or nothing on them. So, they're the plain um, red or white line tires. So, none of the components of this kit has changed. The directions are pretty nice. It's pretty much the same directions that you get in there as the other one other than not mentioning vanishing point at all it's the same same directions other than the decals and telling you about that and that's the big difference between this one and the and the vanishing point is you get a really nice crisper set of decals in white or black and then you get the same those and then 446 pack that actually says charger that doesn't say Challenger. Matter of fact, can you see that? See if it'll focus on that. That looks like it says Charger. I never noticed that before. It really does look like it says Charger. It's definitely not enough. There's definitely not two L's in there. 
So I never noticed that before, but I've noticed the RT stripes and the Bumblebee stripe for the back. So on the plain AMT things. So I, I guess uh, uh, there's a issue right there that I never noticed before. But other than um, that, the decals are definitely a surprise. But it comes with all the components and all the parts as the vanishing point and even the chrome gas cap. So this has everything. Now there's one other uh, one that I haven't seen or haven't got. And about the same time they issued this, and I'll throw this box art up there, they did another convertible showing the shaker hood. And I'm not 100% sure if that has all of the original parts, including the interior, or if it got the updated interior that the later kits got, um, because that was issued almost the same time as this. But I really haven't seen that one. It seems to be pretty rare, and I don't really know anybody who's gotten them. But I've got you know this one and a um, bunch of the others, and, and I've used a bunch of them. See, here's a bunch of them molded in gray, molded in orange. Uh, a lot of the uh, Yankee Challenger ones were molded in orange, especially the earlier issues. So I grabbed a bunch of those as I find them. You know, of course, here's another box art. But I've used many of them. But those are just some of the boxes that I haven't actually seen. But I've been through many of these. So I will uh, uh, show you why I have so many of these. So stay tuned. Now here is why I really like this kit and why I've got so many of them. It presents well, pretty well out of the box. Um, they look really good out of the box. And you can uh, do a couple of different versions with what's in the box, plus being a convertible. There really aren't any convertibles out there. I personally like convertibles. I just recently showed you my convertible that I, I did build. But most of these I've had, I think all of these have been featured on my channel. But here's a resin body. This is a Jimmy Flintstone RTSE resin body. I built this one. Matter of fact, I've got another resin body and I always wanted to do a shaker uh, version of that one. Plus, here's a, a Monogram's uh, shaker base with the grill in it. I want to adapt or modify this grill and put it in there. Uh, I haven't gotten that far. And like I mentioned, filling in this hood and using that body. But this is a Model Haas Resin 71. I've shown this on my channel. I put a Hemi in it, but I've swapped the entire chassis from that into here. And while this one is a resin copy, I also have uh, an original MPC that I have not restored yet. That's what this is. This is a 70 Challenger MPC Rebuilder. That's very, very nice. I have a couple of these and I've shown them on my channel as well and just haven't gotten to these as well. But same thing, swapping this chassis into this body, really easy to do, and then putting a much nicer motor in it because MPC's motor, is, even though it's a nicer Hemi, it has a 444 barrel kind of set up on it, not the Hemi's air cleaner or dual fours. But there are nicer motors. Like I really don't care too much for the motor that's issued in this kit or the, the way the wheels are made or attached. But once it's assembled, it looks really good. But it's got a really nice chassis. And this one's the same thing. It's the 72. I believe I showed this on my channel or my 73. I have all of the MPC bodies. And I swapped in the entire chassis in this one as well. So I did that to this. and But I put in a Duster 340 engine in here um, to, to go small block with it. So um, that's why I've used so many of these uh chassis there's one two three four five i think five or six of them i've done that i'm not showing all of them here plus there are people that make resin parts to enhance these or change them hearts parts makes a resin conversion kit to change the 70 into a 71 it has the front and rear pieces and i have those pieces and the rt scoops that go on the side he has those um he or they and I purchased them, have not actually used them or fitted them. I've played with them. And then even before that, and he has the parts to make the pace car, which is one that I really want to make from the convertible. But also, a long time ago, uh, Time Machine Resin actually sold a Challenger convertible pace car resin body kit, hood and body with the body side moldings and everything. 
and I bought all of that uh, to build that and I never never got to that one yet and I have the decals so that's why I've got so many of these is Challenger being one of my favorites there's so many variables so many options and so many things you can do with this kit so um, it's fairly nice out of the box it takes a little bit of work it's as far as challengers go it's a it's pretty decent i really like these mpc bodies and interiors but the chassis and engines have, leave a lot to be desired these amt ones the engines really need uh, a little bit of help uh as i pointed out the engines but they show pretty much nicely out of the box uh, i haven't done one with this hood or the the 446 pack air cleaner on it but there are other engines you can swap into them so there's just so much you can do and so much kit bashing um, to combine all of these to make what you want. So I've, I've done it to like all these. This one's got a 440, uh, four barrel out of a 71 charger. So I've done a lot of swapping of motors here. So like I said, Hemi, 440, 340. And then that one's got the Hemi that came from them. But I've had a lot of fun with these and I've got so many more challengers uh, to build as well uh, It's it scares me to think about how many I've actually got and you know, I have to write it down I actually kind of have a paper inventory of what I have and what what I've got to keep track of some of this stuff But anyway, um, thank you for tuning in and subscribing I hope this video was very helpful to you because you know these kits. They're not all the same surprisingly and um, I just wanted to show you the differences and a lot of valuable information in here for those of you guys that are in the Mopars and you're looking to build a specific one. And it really helps to know which, which one of these versions has what you want to build what you want and what is different, what to look out for. So thank you for tuning in, subscribing, and all your comments. I really appreciate it. And you guys, you have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next Saturday.